In this video I will test different scroll jocks and colored jocks. And I will show how I got very low runout. When I got the lathe, the flange and the jock was marked like this. And there's a good reason for it. It is because it does matter where you put the jock on the spindle and it does matter what key you use when you clamp on something in the jock. By finding the best position for the chuck on the spindle and the best key to use, then you can get very low runout like this. This is a three jaw chuck and that is very good. After I got the lathe and saw the precision, I just had to buy these two. I bought them the same place where I bought the lathe because when you buy there, for your chuck, you get a 38 mm bore, and that's bigger than standard. So let's get one of them mounted. And here it is, the Ford your chuck is mounted in the lathe. Not the way I was hoping. <laughs> it turns out the fit is simply too tight on the spindle. If I force it on there with the bolts, I will absolutely never get it off. So I really hate to do it, but I will grind it. I will use some sandpaper or emery paper and take a little bit and test it and take a little bit more and test it until I'm satisfied. And still too tight. I will keep on until it works. So here we are, no marks from the jaws. I don't know why, but I'm happy. Now I can put it on by hand and I can take it off by hand. I just need to practice a little bit, I think. Maybe it's a little tight still, but this I can work with. Now I have tested all three positions on the spindle, found the best one and found the best key to use as well. By finding the best combination, I got this run out. Can your lathe do this? Time to mark it so I know what to do next time I'm going to use this chuck. What will happen if I use the other key? Let's try. The one with the mark is the right one and I will use the other one. And that is what we get. What will happen if I move the chuck to a different location on the spindle? First I show the very low runout and I will move the chuck and let's see. In this first test I will make a cut in the video so you don't have to wait too long. I will rotate the chuck so the marks don't line up anymore. I don't even need to zoom in, do I? But now I will make a Formula 1 chuck change. 
and without cutting the video I will move it back to the right position so you can see that I'm not cheating and then I really hope we have the low run out. So please bear with me here, it's my first time in Formula 1. I am a mechanic, but not that <laughs> type of mechanic. Now the marks line up again, and let's see. And there we have it. I mean, this is absolutely great. I'm very happy I bought this. The six jaw chuck. This one goes straight on to the spindle. It fits very well, just how it's supposed to do, I guess. Again, I have tested all three positions on the spindle and what key is the best one to use and then I got this. I just give it one full turn more so you can see that it is fully engaged. This is my third mini lathe during the last 30 years. This is absolutely the best one of them. Time to mark it, so I know what to do the next time. And I am almost sure this is the key that I used. And now... <laughs> The doubt is creeping in on me, so I will just check it. And that will also show that it is repeatable. Oh yes, this is nice. Collet chucks. With these prices from China, you just gotta have them. The ER40 I bought because I already have collets for it. The ER50 I bought after because I found out it can have a 38mm bore, the same as the spindle. The ER50 fitted straight on the spindle. Again I have tested all three positions on the spindle. There is not a big difference with this colored chuck. There is a little difference, but not a lot. Not a lot to say. That's pretty good, I guess. 
Det I er forudsiger til very different story, it is far from fitting the spindle. That chuck is going to take a lot of work, it almost needs machining, I would say. But I will take it with sandpaper, and yes, I am clamping on the threads, and no, I don't like it. And the first test shows that there is a long way to go, so I will keep on take a little bit. You don't want to take too much, so it's really a matter of testing and <laughs> testing and testing. It took quite a while and half a meter of emery paper, I think, but now I am satisfied. And the thread still works, so I was lucky this time. Again, I have tested all three positions on the spindle. Not much difference, but there was a difference. Runout is okay, I guess, but if you look at the cutted chuck at the end, it looks like it's wobbling. I don't know, maybe it doesn't matter, but I think I will check it with a collet. So here I have a collet with an end mill. Of course now we also have the tolerance of the collet to deal with. And these are not expensive collets I have, so yeah, it is what it is. Is it good or bad? Is it good enough? I will let you decide. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.